Singapore, home of the best airport, chili crab, and, uh, no, wrong one. Let me restart. Singapore, home of sand. Yes, say hello to Singapore, Michigan, a town so profoundly bad at being a town that it wiped itself off the map and drowned itself in this sand dune by the Kalamazoo River. Whoops, how did this happen? And could it happen to just anyone or only a town as messy as Singapore? The answer may surprise you, unless you already know a lot about sand dunes, in which case, congrats, I guess. Our story begins with a man named O'Shea Wilder, a bank, a sawmill, and a dream. Wilder settled Singapore in 1837, just in time for the Panic of 1837, which put the town on the economic struggle bus from year one. Nevertheless, it found its footing in the lumber and shipping biz. At its peak, over 300 people lived there and shipped out millions of feet of lumber a year, and they had a knack for turning bad news into good news. In 1842, a brutal winter brought a brutal shipwreck, which provided the town enough flour and wine to survive. In 1859, the river knocked their lighthouse down, and they said, great, we don't have to keep a lighthouse anymore. And in 1871, when weather and God conspired to burn much of the Upper Midwest, including Peshtigo, Holland, Port Huron, Manistee, and most famously Chicago, Singapore was spared and saw a huge business opportunity in selling their unburnt lumber to rebuild the burnt cities. So Singapore gets down to business and harvests every single one of their white pine trees, the last good lumber in the region, which turns out to be a huge mistake, and not just because sustainable farming. Let's look at the Singapore area. This is where Singapore was, that was the harbor, and there's Lake Michigan. Over here was forest, that's normal, we don't care about that. But over here, that was forest, on top of a sand dune. Oh my God, Sam, what? How is that possible? Kablammo, time for dune school. Today's lesson, coastal sand dunes. So not that desert stuff and not where Zendaya lives. They're most common by the ocean, but you can also find them along the eastern shore of Lake Michigan. Sand's 4,500 years old, reaching heights of up to 60 meters and exciting my writers. Dunes, dunes, dunes. Dunes. Here's how a dune gets built. The river carries sand to the lake and or sand erodes off of a bluff. The waves carry it to the beach and when water levels get lower, the sand dries out and winds blow it to the land. Little plants and things catch it and make it start gathering into a ridge. Wind blows more sand up the ridge and it keeps accumulating on itself until, ta-da, dune. Plants do some of the work to get a dune started, but most of the work to stabilize it. A process the US Army described in a breezy 65 pages, all of which my writer read. And no, it's not because I threatened her this time. She's just very into plants, and when we don't do enough videos about them, she posts my home address on Reddit. So here she is attempting to demonstrate this with the nearest sand she could get to. Plants stabilize a dune in two ways. One, the part of the plant above ground catches and diverts some of the wind that would otherwise push the dune to and or fro. Two, the part of the plant below the ground anchors and grips the sand, making it less likely to get eroded away by waves, and also brings down some moisture, which makes it harder to blow away with wind. Plants arrive in a coastal dune in three stages, which follow each other in time, forming one after another, and space, appearing progressively further from the beach. The first plants to rock up are pioneers, the ones that help start it all, plus other little grasses and things. As those grow and die, they add fertilizer to the sand underneath them, which makes that sand into soil that can support heavier, needier plants which arrive in the next era. Scrub. Think shrubs. Think vines. Think tiny versions of trees. The denser these plants are packed in, the more stable the land beneath them, but it's a delicate balance. If a fire or something takes the plants out, you can't just replant them. You have to work your way back up from the pioneers until the land is ready again. But if all goes well, you may end up in a dune's third vegetation era. Forest. In the oldest, most interior, most stable parts of the dune, the land has really good soil, and the trees that were mini in the scrub zone can be full-sized with super deep root systems. Dune forest is rare, and in the US, you'll only find it on the Atlantic coast down south or by the Great Lakes. Even rarer is dune forest with white pine, a fabulous lumber tree only occasionally appearing down by the Atlantic, but abounding in the Great Lakes scrub when the army made their little report. Abounding, once upon a time, next to Singapore. Singapore's pines, it turned out, were the only thing stabilizing the massive sand dunes between the town and Lake Michigan. So when they harvested them all, the dunes were defenseless against the mighty winds of the lake, winds that blew all that dune sand into Singapore. At this point, the town looked around and realized, ooh, we screwed up and started getting out of there. A new company bought the big mill and shipped its main parts up to a new mill in the UP. 
The townspeople loaded three houses and the bank onto logs and slid them down the frozen Kalamazoo River to Sagatuck, most of which are still in use and raining wood chips on their residents. The last people to remain were a family living in the town's three-story boarding house, who, the story goes, just kept moving to higher floors as the sand piled up. Once they were living on the third floor, and sand came through the chimney, they abandoned ship too. By 1894, Singapore was officially empty and completely submerged. And if you think this is an exclusively 19th century problem, think again. Head north of ex-Singapore and you'll find a house-eating dune neighbors have pooled money to physically truck back to the beach. Or south to Indiana Dunes National Park, where the sand's encroaching on this building, according to my writer Ben anyway. Or look somewhere like Somalia, where fast-moving dunes are eating up coastal towns left, right, and center. Singapore may be the dumbest example, since they did it to themselves, but they weren't the last people to have to worry about this stuff. But what if Singapore today? Well, the site is pretty much just sand and a Singapore was here sign. We don't know exactly what's underneath unless they do some proper archaeology. There could be as many as 40 houses preserved in the sand, well, 37, and over the years people have seen bits of the dock and the picket fence around the graveyard. The future is unclear. Many a marina, housing development, and golf course have been proposed there, but historians and NIMBYs alike say no thank you, which is Midwestern for over my dead body. And hey, maybe we shouldn't even care. But whatever does become of Singapore, let's hope it stays above ground this time. Now, if you're looking at this sand dune and thinking, wow, that looks like a contour map, congrats on being a math genius. But if you're thinking, wait, what's a contour map, I suggest you check out this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. I am not a math or science inclined person. I find the concepts interesting, but I really struggle to wrap my head around numbers and graphs and letters that are numbers beneath it all. But Brilliant works for me. It makes concepts that I thought I could never understand tangible, digestible, and even fun with super interactive, quick lessons that I can fit into even my busiest days. And it's not just for people who have a calc final to pass. Learning something like computer language or physics basics, or if you're really stuck on contour maps, multivariable calculus, sharpens your problem solving skills and demystifies a lot of the crazy science and math swirling all around us. So whether you're a student, a lifelong learner, or someone who's trying to convert their TikTok hours to something slightly better for your head, give Brilliant a try. And hey, you can do just that free for a full 30 days by heading to brilliant.org slash HAI or clicking on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off their annual premium subscription, so get on it.